Hello, and welcome to our latest episode of Pen Writers Presents. I am Joy Givens, joined as always by my wonderful co host, Rhonda Battenfelder. And we are so excited to be joined today by just stunning debut author, Chloe Gong, author of These Violent Delights, released in 2020. It is a just gripping and beautifully written loose retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in 1920s Shanghai, and it is an adventure. <laughs> so Chloe, thank you so much for being here with us today. Of course, thank you for having me. <laughs> so we'd love to start by just getting to know you a little bit better, getting to know um, your journey as an author, and then a little bit your journey with this book specifically. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. So Hello everyone, it is lovely to be here. My name is Chloe Gong. I am the author of these last ones, as we went through before. Um, I am currently a senior at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm originally from New Zealand, which is what the accent is. I even have the flag lurking in the background. That's the thing I love about Zoom. It's, I never have to clarify, it's just, it's always there. Um, but yeah, I wrote this book, um, summer after freshman year of college. Um, it went relatively fast because it's, I think it's the, it's like the, the eighth or the ninth book I've ever drafted. I've lost count because I, I wrote a lot when I was a teenager. I was just constantly like pumping out manuscripts, but I was constantly pumping out like first drafts. I never really revised a book until I got to this. And once I wrote this, I thought, you know, this is something that I think could actually get published. So so it was the first book that I actually like sort of sat down with and went, okay, how do I make this better so that it's just a pinging. Um, it's the first book that I actually sat down with and thought, okay, if I, you know, revise this a little, like fix this up, make it actually like, you know, something that other people can read as well, then maybe I can get it published. So, you know, I revised it for like a few weeks, a month or so, and then I started querying and um, once I signed with an agent, you know, it all went, it all went from there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's great to know. I mean, you are clearly, you are new on the scene, but not new to writing, um, mm -hmm. even for still being in college that you've put in so many hours in, in honing your craft. And it, it shows in this book. I mean, um, and, and I, I'm gonna throw in a question that wasn't on our list here and I'm sorry, I just wanted to know, um, what books and authors inspired you um, during your teenage years and in writing this? Obviously it's, it's a retelling loosely of Shakespeare. Um, you really just take it and, and make it your own, um, but what else inspired you while you were writing this? No, that's a great question. I so, so much YA because I grew up like while YA was like at its like peak, like all of the big blockbusters that were like making its way into like mainstream media. So when I first got into like really reading, it was during the time of um, like Twilight was like hitting the cinemas. I was a bit too young to actually hit the Twilight book like saga. But um, I think when I was really getting into it, it was things like Divergent and um, the Fallen series by Lauren Kate. Um, the Mortal Instruments was like my first big like fandom obsession. Like when I was 14, I was just running a blog, like dedicated to it. Um, so when I like started writing this, um, it was books like um, Libba Bray's The Diviners and like Lainey Taylor's Order of Smoke and Bone, like those kinds of like the really atmospheric YA I was really into. And I really wanted to do something just like that. Like, I, I mean, obviously, I wanted, you know, sort of my own twist, my own story and like my own voice, but I wanted the kind of effect that like authors like Lady Kane on Libra kind of really, they really master that like lyrical kind of prose angle. Well, you have definitely mastered that as well. And I love that you talked about atmospheric because from page one of these violent delights, it's such an organic story and it flows so beautifully from page to page that you're just immediately like, oh, I cannot put this down. Do you have any tips or techniques that you would recommend for writers trying to develop that skill? Mm -hmm. I think the way that I always approach it first is that I have to outline everything very thoroughly. 
Um, and I know that like outlining doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So I think like whether someone is like, you know, a heavy outliner or if they kind of just go for it, the most important thing is like really thinking about like what you're trying to achieve in like a certain scene or like a certain, you know, whole level arc. Like I really percolate on like what I'm trying to do. And for me, it works best if I write everything down. Like if I just word vomit everything I'm trying to achieve, if I word vomit like what, you know, images or feelings or emotions I'm trying to hit in a scene, I just put it in a Word document so that I don't forget it. Um, but like when I was younger, I also wasn't as heavy in outliner what I kind of do is I just think about it really deeply and just keep it in my head so I feel like because once I get older like I have too much juggling in my head that I can't do that anymore I have to write it down but if people don't like writing it down you know I think thinking about it a lot can actually kind of help like materialize everything um and you know sometimes if you think about it too like a lot too certain things just feel like they don't work anymore and you're like oh okay I see why that doesn't work I'll go back and adjust you kind of do all adjusting before it hits the page so once it does hit the page it kind of just flows <laughs> yeah that's that's very good advice um so in your program at Penn are you uh, an English major or writing major I'm a English and international relations double major oh wow and you can really see that coming through in the book as well um <laughs> there's such a beautiful um and and complex and harrowing political thread through all of this story as well. Um, can you take us through kind of your outline process for this book? Um, as you were taking the seed of an idea, how did you shape it into all these elements that come together in this completely new setting with completely new characters? Oh, I love this question. I love the research questions. Um, it kind of, it started with the plot first because I wanted to do like a blood feud story and like a um you know rival rival families kind of story um and then that kind of developed into the Romeo and Juliet retelling because it you know they felt similar enough in theme that I thought it'd be interesting to actually go about doing you know a kind of reimagining rather than just do oh like this is my own story it has nothing to do with Romeo and Juliet it, you know it sounds similar enough I knew that people would make comparisons so I thought would actually be more interesting to like just go right for the reimagining angle like hit the same themes but come about it like completely differently so once I kind of decided to do that I put the setting in 1920s Shanghai because I had some idea already about what was going on at that time because my parents are from Shanghai they've always like told me stories about it I was born there but I moved so early that I, I don't remember much but um I guess like the culture I was raised in like gave me a enough of a like angle into it that I thought it'd be so interesting to kind of you know explore it do more research into it um and it just seemed to fit like the Shakespearean theme so well because you know the whole Romeo and Juliet like love in a place of hatred um kind of could perfectly shift that over into like a lawless climate like during a time of like you know colonialism and then also like rival gangs going on like there was you know so so many themes to work with I guess um so once I kind of had like these big like questions that I kind of wanted to get at I did a lot of like I, I went to the library and I kind of just sat myself down in the 1920s China like aisle and I just went through the books like one by one by one I kind of just skimmed through all of them um just to like I, I didn't even necessarily use like even 90% of the information I you know read through but it was just it it was great to kind of immerse myself into like what people were writing about at that time what was you you know, being noted down as like historically remarkable at that time. Um, so once I had like, you know, all of the history stuff, I could kind of mash like the timeline because I wanted to keep it accurate still. Um, I had the timeline and mashed it up with the themes. And then I kind of came up with like the fantastical angle of like a monster running around because then that was kind of like a colonialism metaphor as well. And that kind of snaked its way in there as well. Um, and then, you know, once I had these like, these very separate genres in a sense I kind of mushed it all together and you know since I'm a really um heavy outliner I kind of went through like 
basically just describing everything that I kind of wanted to happen. And because there was, you know, there's so much going on. There's the rival gangs, there's the monster, there's the history. Um, it was always really helpful for me to have an outline because then I can fix things before I actually go about writing it. Um, my first drafts tend to be quite clean because I do like a zero draft where everything is very, it's like a 10,000 word draft almost. And then I fix everything at that stage and I keep fixing it and fixing it. And then that goes into the first draft, which is not to say my first draft is perfect because then I ended up rewriting it later anyway. But um, it did help like the first draft of it kind of come into what I was imagining in my head as closely as possible. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. And as a writer, it's so interesting to hear how you're connecting all of those pieces. And it is such a good way to talk about world building for folks that are trying to figure out how do you jump in and, and tackle this. When you talk about your outline, is there a particular type of outline that you like to use or was there um, a plotting guide or, or craft book that um, you really followed or is it kind of your own outline that you've set up? It's kind of my own. Surprisingly, um, I haven't found a like outlining. Um, I know a lot of people use like I think Save the Cat or like a lot of the other beat sheets. I haven't found one that kind of works for me. And I don't know if it's because um, I tend to write in five acts, which I think some people can kind of feel. Um, I it kind of in a way is mimicking like the Shakespearean like five acts, but it's also I think it's just something that kind of naturally feels more right, right to me than the three act structure. Um, like for me, I feel like I like to lean more into the beginning cause I like leaning into the world so much cause you know, I enjoy actually creating like a whole new world. So I spend more time in it. And then um, I think I have, you know, less of a like, especially for this first book because there's more of a duology to come as I was kind of reworking it. Like the end kind of happens like quite, you know, like Da, da, da. Um, because there's you know more to come in a second book so it felt like more fitting to me to have like a 5x structure which I feel like it's not you know something that's too common um, but it worked for me so I thought you know I'm just I'm just gonna stick with this um, so yeah mostly when I do outline I kind of just have like um, big paragraphs and to me like I can see it in my head as splitting everything into you know five separate chunks um, usually they feel quite even to me, um, like act one and act two will kind of be like the same size. Sometimes act three and act four are much beefy and then act five is kind of the same like um, size as act one. And I think this is something that's kind of like sort of developed like in my like spotting capabilities with all the other manuscripts like I've written over the years. I feel like during like manuscript one or two, I could never have, you know, figured out that this is inherently what feels like something that can be paced well. Um, whereas, you know, once you keep writing and writing and writing, like after a lot of books, you kind of get like this natural like feeling about what works and what kind of doesn't. Um, so I think maybe that's why I haven't really leaned much into like pre-made beat sheets. I think pre-made beat sheets are really, really helpful when you're just starting out and you might not necessarily be able to feel out like, oh, is 10,000 words too soon to move to the next act? Do I need more words? Um, but since I've kind of like developed my own like five act system, I think I've sort of leaned more into like my, just what I feel. Like I just put my hands over the laptop and I'm like, okay, I think, I think we're good. <laughs> well, I'm in my humble opinion, I'd say it works quite well for you, what you've developed. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe in another few years, you'll be writing a, your own craft book. Maybe. Like, like five act structure for yeah. uh, literary brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you tell us, I mean, it sounds like you are a, a lightning speed writer when you get to the, the stage of writing. Um, and, and that's amazing. I think the idea of a draft zero is, is such a valuable concept because um, you are really front loading your time there. Um, and so once you are not writing, once you take a break from that, uh, every, every so often I assume you pause for like five minutes, what are you reading right now? What are you enjoying as uh, somebody on the other side of the page? Ooh, good question. I 
at the moment what am I, I always just browse my like bedside table because there's just always a big stack there but um let me grab some I am I was gonna start reading um Aiden Thomas's Lost in the Never Woods because their debut Cemetery Boys was amazing so I haven't started it yet but I will soon um <laughs> I also, I read this actually when it was still a manuscript, but Counting Down With You by Tashi Buyan, excellent YA contemporary, so good, so good. I just, I love YA contemporaries that really like actually feel like teenagers today do. And I think because I'm so close to the target audience, I'm like so picky about like my YA contemporaries. So any one of them that like really hit and like they sound like teenagers, I'm like, yes. And then last but not least, I also have an arc of um, The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed, which I'm super, super, super excited about because it sounds very good. So that's what's on my bedside table right now. <laughs> awesome. Are you able to give us a sneak peek of what you're currently working on or is it a something that you can't talk about yet? <laughs> I, I think I can. I, so, um, it was announced that I'm doing a YA spinoff duology after this duology. It's called Foul Lady Fortune and it's in 1930s Shanghai. Um, but we haven't revealed any information yet because it is going to be starring a character that actually appears in this. So we can't say who it is because that would spoil the second book. But I am currently... <sighs> I, I wouldn't even say I'm currently working on it. I'm currently thinking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and where are you on the sequel to These Violent Delights now? Um, you have a release date? Yeah, it is. It's coming out November 16th of this year. Um, there are arcs already. Oh, it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just got it um, two days ago. Oh. It's very thick. Um, we get a first look here. And it's <laughs> yeah. So it is, um, we're closing up to like the final edit. So it is almost ready. I'm very, very, very excited because I think I'm so excited to see um, people's reactions to how it all ends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it ends violently. It's kind of in the title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or maybe not. It could be. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the title's just to, you know, just to pull wool of everyone's eyes. <laughs> yeah. uh, what well, are you looking forward to in 2021 and beyond? Ooh. Well, in general, I'm looking forward to the world opening again. I'm looking forward to being able to ride in a coffee shop because I miss that so much. Um, but you know, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to bookstores opening and just to see people again. Cause I, I really miss, you know, actually seeing people in the meat space, it's, you know, a screen is great too. Cause it really, it's a, it's a good substitute, but just to see people again and, you know, give bookish hugs. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, you're slated to graduate uh, from Penn in May, is that? Um, yeah, one more month. I'm excited about that too. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you thinking continuing academic career, professional career, writing full time? I think I'm gonna write full time for some time because it it just it seems like I need a break from academia for now. But I, I don't know what I'm gonna do like in the future necessarily, but for the coming year I'm gonna I'm going to be doing some a lot of writing. <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> well, and we can't wait because we are huge fans and I'm thrilled to hear that you're going to be writing more because uh, it's just such a wonderful, immersive story that truly feels different from anything else. And again, from page one, I was absolutely hooked. Like, I'm in for the the long haul of this for sure. So, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Like even the cover. Well, the, they did such a wonderful job. I I thank the universe every day that they gave me that cover. <laughs> yeah, you were with, uh, this is with McElderry. Mm -hmm. um, and my other recent read that I love from McElderry was Legendborn by Tracy. Mm. Um, and 
obviously your books are completely distinct and beautiful in their own right, but I could see kind of a parallel just in the depth of these stories and the way that you use history and um, mythology in some cases, you know, or um, fantasy and just bring all of these elements together in this, in these very atmospheric stories. Um, do you think that is why it's such a good fit for you? Maybe. We share an editor, so Sarah will be very happy to have it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I love Tracy. I love, I actually haven't read Legendborn yet. I have it also in my stack, but I know I'm going to love it because everyone I know who I really trust loves it. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Oh, well, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Uh, any advice you have for writers who are just starting out? Um, I think, I think the advice that I really loved when I was starting out is just to keep writing because so often like you can really get into your own head and think oh like you know this isn't as good as something or like it's not what I want it to look like and I think that's it's a it's a rite of passage for everyone starting out it's always going to be rough it's always going to be hard um, but if you just keep going like it starts you know things start taking shape and things start to look like how you want it to look like and the more like work and time and effort you put into it it all just starts you know it starts feeling like a book so people for people first starting out keep going just, just keep going <laughs> <laughs> um i have one more question just from from me uh and then around if you have any more questions um so the first seven or eight books that you wrote are you gonna revisit any of them? Are they are they drawer novels for sure? Or are they gonna make an appearance with the revisions at some point? I think I think they're probably they're probably like retired because mm -hmm. the way that I kind of saw them is that sometimes I go back and reread them and I think like these are really fun novels. Um, but they they inherently are just not like they're not up to par like to what is you know publishable and while like I can like at my stage now I can see how I could revise it to get it to something that is something that's publishable it would change the story to make it a like a new version of that story and that's not necessarily like what I want to do with it you know I'm very happy to just leave it and it's like kind of ugly like fun version and just let it kind of sit and be that version of itself and just you know be the book that I had to have written to get to being able to write this book um so yeah maybe, maybe one day if I kind of you know feel like I want people to see like that um world or something I could put the time into revising it but I know that if I do revise it it would inherently change it into a different book so for now, I'm, I'm happy for the ugly duckling books to kind of just stay ugly ducklings. <laughs> That's a really good answer. And, and that I think shows alongside craftsmanship, how much humility goes into the act of writing, right? To have this sort of private history museum for yourself of your writing career. Um, I think that's really neat. Oh, you're muted, Rhonda, sorry. <laughs> I do that at least once every time. So, yeah, I thought it was so good too. I am just so grateful for your time today. This was really thrilling for us and there was such great advice. Uh, we really appreciate everything that you shared and so excited. Everybody remember these violent delights are out now and Our Violent Ends releases November 16th plus more to come. So thank you again so much. Thank you so much, Chloe. It is, it's been a delight talking with you um, and good luck with everything you have ahead and congratulations on your impending graduation, your newest release date, your newest deal. And all that was ahead. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was very fun. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> Great. Well, um, I, will, I will stop the feed now. So uh, on behalf of Rhonda Battenfelder, thanking Chloe Gone again for her time. I'm Joy Givens. We'll see you next time on Penwriters Presents.